Okay, my friends, as I am a simple person, I try to make things simple. I say that the, the standard atomic model is totally wrong because it says that there's one tiny little negative and a huge positive core for a proton. But they both have the same charge. One is negative and one is positive. 1830 or so times difference in size. Why do they have the same charge? Secondly, why doesn't that just snap in and get in there? This is totally wrong. It absolutely does not work. This does work. It's, it's a dipole atomic model. Dipole means instead of the electron being that little red glowy thing, it's got the dark matter attached to it. That's what they never realized. The muon, as they found, this dark matter from Fermilab, they found it. They know it's there. They just they, they smash huge particles together and just get debris, just trash. And when they pick through the trash, after 10 years, they discovered that these were the smallest particles in the trash. And they kept seeing them. So they said, well, these got to be the most elementary particles. This one here is a fixed particle, and that's a glowy particle exactly what we found and that's what they are and two of them together back to back make a photon and we even saw the town meet neutrinos let me just show you and i'm going to tell you right now everything in the entire universe is made of these two particles that's all that exists so when they say they have a particle zoo all they have is different chunks of these now it's not this simple. It's, it is simple. Simple, simple, simple. But it's not that simple. This is what I'm working on right now. This is the first draft of how these particles really are in the Higgs model. But these are the only two that exist. These are my claims. And I've got masses. And I, I came down to 123 particles. And then these are the different particles in different colors. And then how the the core is actually set up. It's not set up the way they're talking about. There's a bunch of different things that, as we evolve through this, but I, I'm going to try to simplify everything. So today, that's all I'm going to tell you, is it's the, the, the core of every, every nucleus is not made of protons. It's made of electrons. It's all a big pile of electrons. And then some more surround it. They want to get in. And they say, no, we have enough. We have just enough. And that's what stability is. And then you can have a few extra or a few less. And that's what's called um, an isotope. All right? An isotope means an ions are missing. Electrons are not there that should be in this core. That's all it is. I don't know how they miss this. I really don't know. Because that's what they, they, they that gives them half lives. So they're sometimes they're stable right exactly at a certain number, and then maybe another number they're just almost exactly as stable. And then if you, when you get off of that mark, it wants some more electrons, or it wants to give some up. That's all to get to to that mark. All right, it's not this at all, not whatsoever. All right, so this is a is a proton. And it consists, in my model right now, I have it consisting of 1,823 electrons. So instead of one proton, it's 1,823 electrons. And what does that mean? That means it wants one more electron. So it's a positive. It wants to attract one. But surrounding the core, is so many electrons, it says, no, you can't come in here. That's what the quantum distance is. It stays at one quantum distance out. It says, I'd like to come in. It says, no, we've got enough surrounding the core right now. You cannot come in. And then they'll start to collect around the outside. Those are the valence electrons. But the dark matter is deep inside. The dark matter can lay right up against itself. No problem whatsoever. The white wants to be away. So the white will always end up surrounding the dark matter. That's the problem why they've never seen it before. All right, don't forget, this is what they say is a hydrogen. One big positive center 
and one little tiny negative, but it's not. It's, these negatives are the same number of negatives as there is positives, and they are dipoles. They're just like little bar magnets, only the black part or the, the positive part can go in and, and touch each other. It, there's no problem with that, but the negative part, the glowy part, which is this part here. It says, get away from me, get away. So they coat. They end up coating the dark matter. So they're just basically like this. All right? Now, I'm going to show you how an atomic bomb works. And I can show you that literally proves the white particles, which are the glowy, just as Don Lincoln says, they have almost no mass whatsoever, but they burn and have a hell of a big magnetic field. This one is a fixed particle, which is the one on the inside. It never changes size. All right, so if you had an atomic bomb go off and all of the white material, like I'm showing, is on the outside, that would go first, then the black would follow it. The black is the, is the bomber. This has no mass. So this should burn stuff and not push it. This should push stuff and not burn it. Watch it happen. By the way, the next one I'm going to do is going to be on these Higgs fields. They're colliding things head on and just finding all that debris. We see Higgs fields coming out of our ears, and they're just hoping to see a few thousand of them over the next year or something. Okay, for the one millionth time, you saw Fermi Labs particles. That one doesn't, doesn't have any mass to it, but it burns like hell. That one just has a ton of mass and doesn't burn. We created them in light right there. Nobody's ever seen the black particle before. Remember I said these two are attached together, and each one of them makes... A dipole electron, two dipole electrons back to back are like two bar magnets, they make up a photon. This is nothing more than this particle here, but colorized so we can see its values. And here it comes through the Venturi and it separates. The black particle that is here disassociates from the white. The white squirts through, exactly like the Fermi lab says they want to see. Electron showers, we got them. Muon, turn it into a muon, just a sterile muon, we got it. Coming back together, we got it. And these are where the Higgs are. They don't understand that, I don't think. This right here is where the Higgs are. This is the reattachment from the black back to the white. And I can show that actually happened. You see this? We squirt these just continuously. I mean, just billions of them. They're just everywhere. Now, what happens when the white att attaches back to the black? Right there, the tip of the Higgs field. These are the Higgs fields. I showed you before all those round patterns. We're using light, so we're not just digging through debris. We're watching the actual particles come out of here and then hit us right in the face. And as they do, they turn back into the black and white particles, right at the tip. Down in the well, they'll be coming forward. They're going to turn in in a second. But, it, you know, that's what happens. The, the tip turns back into particles, and then the well comes forward and turns into particles. And that's the, the reassociation from the white back to the black. We saw them separate. And these are the Higgs, and I mean, we can squirt these in just copious quantities. All right, this tells a lot. Light is a wave because it has magnetic particles creating a field. So the field has to move through, but the field is being pushed by the particle. Well, guess what? That field is now, the particle is accelerating because of the Venturi. And that makes the field collapse around the particle because the particle is, is going too fast for the wave. All right, because it has to bang into everything that's in front, all this white stuff. Now, as it starts to collect in front of the Venturi, it slows down because it's piling up on itself. Field to push to shove, push to shove. This is a pulse laser. It's boop, 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 boop. So it's slowing down. And then it goes through the Venturi, only the white. The black just squirts the white through. It's like a bomb. Bam, 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 bam. And it squirts this white through. Right here is where the Higgs come out. This is unbelievable luminosity. From this here to this, that is an increase in energy. We should be able to harvest free energy right here. You see these here? 
These are nothing more than the light particles that are here. But that would never, we would never see this wave here at all. We wouldn't see these waves and we wouldn't see any of this stuff. Because this is not, this was the only one that is dead nuts right it through the center of the Venturi. These are all coming all over the place, but nothing is impacting them enough. This is being impacted because it's being drawn forward. These are being impacted because they're being pushed back against. That's energy. I don't care. Whenever you see white glowing, it means it's energetic. Here it wasn't energetic, here it is. Why shouldn't we be able to harvest energy? P equals I times E. E equals luminosity. P is power. I is the number of electrons. Let's say we don't increase the number of electrons at all. Who cares? If the P is the power equals I times E and the energy went through the roof, which you can see. Luminosity is energy. Just look it up. So if the energy went up through the roof, the power is going to go through the roof. I don't care if we didn't have any extra electrons at all. It doesn't matter. All this stuff exists right now. The lasers, the receivers. Venturi is, is dirt cheap, but you'd have to engineer something that wouldn't be degraded because I'm sure right here there's a hell of a lot of energy. And you'd have to have some kind of material that could withstand just continuously doing this. Because we could squirt that out. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Watch how much we can squirt, too. When you were talking about Higgs fields, let me show you Higgs fields. Okay, according to Roger, this is an atomic bomb. It is saturated, absolutely, completely, totally dominated with, with particles. It's, it's so, it's unstable. It has so many particles there. Now, they want to just blow away right now. So what they ended up doing is pushing everything together so hard that when it came out, all the white particles would come out first. That's just because they coat everything. Then the dark particles will come. If the white particles have no mass, but they burn, and the dark particles coming next have no burn, but they have mass, will we see it? in an atomic bomb blast because we're, to, we're just sending out all these really burning particles first. That's, that's my theory and that's what it says. And it says those burning ones will go first. And now we know from Fermilab that they have no mass and the black ones have the mass. I showed you the particles, the red and the black, in my light experiments. Now we're going to see the red and the black hit the house. The red hits first then the black. All right, so here goes. Let me turn off the sound, and I'm going to put it down to a little slower than normal. All right, we'll put it at half speed. It's actually slowed down already. It's in slow motion. But here's what happens. Watch. All right, the first thing you'll see is the house will just look. Watch the house burn. Look, nothing's not not a damn thing went anywhere. And then all of a sudden, boom! There's the black particles. Now watch. All that stuff comes back to get back to where the black stuff was back at the tarmac because it blew off all the white stuff. The white stuff completely gone. That burnt the house, didn't push it. The next thing was most of the black ones went too. Following this, the house goes and then everything comes back. Well, these come back. Well, every probably both things come back. But they come back to where the originator of the black particles was. All right, so that's just a brief introduction to the different types of particles that really are here. And the electro photons are two electrons back to back. Electrons are made out of one muon and one electron neutrino. The two of them together make what we would always consider an electron. Back to back, they make proton uh, photons. Balls of them make up protons. And then bigger balls of them make up molecules. Now, this is just very basic. We're going to get in all this stuff deep into the guts of it and the energies and, the, you know, all, as much as I can do about it. And, and, and plus, the periodic chart has to completely change. This is not anywhere near right anymore. In a macro sense, yes. On the subatomic sense, absolutely not. Plus, the construction of the orbitals is not correct either. In my opinion, in my opinion I see it as, as separation zones between just like eggshells. 
not as as the way they because they just have one big positive nucleus and a bunch of little electrons. It's not that way at all. It's anyway. This is when we're going to get deep, 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 deep. But this is the standard model. This is my model. All right. Everything is a dipole. There is no anything like that. The cores of, of atoms are not positive. They are dipoles.